I've given you a list of the best writing tools using AI, but what I haven't done is given you a list of the other tools that I use that are not AI related, at least not directly, and the uses that I recommend for authors. And so let's get into that. All right, folks, every time I do a live stream, I usually use one or more of these tools and I get questions about them. And so even though these tools are not AI related and this is a primarily AI related channel, I thought it would be a good idea to run through the tools that I actually use myself. I don't pretend to promote tools that I don't actually use unless I, there's a really good reason why I would. But everything you're going to see today are tools that I actually own, that I use and I think are worthwhile for authors to consider. Most of these links are affiliate. You can find them all below in the description. But again, these are tools I actually use. The first one is Atticus. Now I get tons of questions about Atticus. This is actually not an affiliate link, the one you'll see because they don't have affiliate links yet. But I am associated with them being a, an employee of Kindlepreneur. That said, this is a tool I would use regardless. This is what I use for writing my books and it's what I use for formatting my books. It is good for both. It is especially good for f formatting. I used to use Google Docs and I've used Scrivener in the past and I no longer use either of those because I can do it all in Atticus. And I also used to use Vellum back when I owned a Mac. I no longer own a Mac. Sorry for all of the Apple lovers out there. But Vellum is Mac only. And while it's a good formatting program, it's only formatting. There are a lot of things that Atticus can do that Vellum doesn't. And it's also only available for Mac. So if you are a PC user or you use a Chromebook or something like that, you can only use Atticus in, in that particular case. You can't use Vellum. I'll show you an example of what this looks like here. This is the little lore book that I put together. I've actually got it right here. You can check this out on my, you can check this out on my store. Uh, just a, a quick little lore book that I, I put together using mostly AI, but I've got it here. You can have like your title page, your copyright page. You can add full page images that are full bleed so that they extend all the way to the edges of your books. And then of course you have the chapters that are put in here. And then if you go to formatting, you can have different themes and you can get a preview of what the theme looks like over here. You can adjust the font style for pretty much everything you can think of for the, for the actual text. You can adjust it for the chapter titles, the chapter subtitles, all kinds of different things. You can adjust the font size, line spacing. And if you're, all of this is overwhelming, you can just pick a preloaded template and it'll have everything all ready to go but you can also choose your trim size here so for instance if i wanted to go five by eight which is what this is here that you see this is a five by eight book and then you'd select it here if you want a six by nine which is a little bigger you could select that and we have all of these basic standard trim sizes for both kindle direct publishing and ingram spark so all of that formatting can be done here really great program super robust and it's not a subscription, it's a lifetime thing. So I hope that was uh, of interest to you. And I'll go ahead and save that theme and get out of here. But you can see I use it for a lot of things, all my books, a couple of public domain books that I've got and uh, a lot of different projects. So definitely check that out. The second tool, and actually this one's more of a service that I use almost exclusively is Mibblart which is where I like to go for my covers. Now I write fantasy and fantasy book covers can get rather expensive just by their nature. And so this is what I found to be the most economical option for fantasy books, but they do really actually provide a lot of different genres. As you can see here, we have fantasy, mystery, urban fantasy, apocalyptic horror, young adult, science fiction, romance, nonfiction, and paranormal. And so you can just, you know, check out a lot of their different things that they've got here. As you can see, there are a number of really good covers here for fantasy. And they, they're just one of the better ones out there for the price. Now, depending on what you need, it starts at $150 for a cover. 
If you might want more, like I usually pay for the full wraparound to create a cover for the entire back of my book. And so you can see here the packages for fiction, 150 for the ebook, 200 for ebook press print, plus print. Uh, you can add promotional materials and all of these things. So there, there's different ways you can go about it. They have bundles where you can get several books at once. So if you're writing a series, that could be useful. Uh, all kinds of different things. Definitely go check them out because I use them almost exclusively for my covers these days. The third tool I wanted to highlight is Campfire. Now Campfire is maybe of the ones on my list, the most optional, but I do think that they are a fantastic research, a fantastic resource for world building. If you are a world builder and you want to kind of figure out how it all fits together, this is the one I would use. There are other services like this, but this is the only one that's really specifically geared for writers and really focusing on helping writers out. They have a whole ton of features. And one of the things I like about them is that their pricing is modular. So I'll show you what Campfire looks like here. You look here on the side, you've got your dashboard, but then you've got characters, manuscript, locations, maps, research, timeline, etc., etc., etc. If you decide you only need like three of these instead of all of them, I happen to have all of them. But if you only have like say say you write romance and you you don't need all of this extra world building stuff for magic or technology or any of those things or made up languages you don't need all of that uh, but you might still want a nice place to put your characters maybe your setting information maybe some of the research you're doing like say your romance is set in paris and you want to see like which streets are they going down what buildings do they go into uh, so you might just want characters and locations maybe research, maybe a timeline. So but you might only need a couple of these. You can buy just the each indiv individual module so that you're only paying for those specific modules and then you're not paying for all of the other stuff that you could get. And so that's one of the real strengths of Campfire for me. I really like that feature. Plus it does a lot of hand-holding. So if we like create a new character here, it gives you space for all of the different things that you might want. You could add your own here as well, your own card. Um, but it's it's doing a lot more than just giving you a blank slate for you to fill out. It gives you different categories, different things to think about as you are creating your characters or your locations or what have you. So that's Campfire. It's another one I would recommend if you are interested in creating a story Bible or just organizing all, all of your research in one place. Next is another service that I personally use frequently and highly recommend for people, and that is Wondrium. Wondrium is a subscription streaming service for a number of educational resources. Uh, so they have the great courses is what the majority of their library is made up of. And the great courses is one of my favorite things in the world because it's basically the only place where you can find really well fleshed out detailed courses about things like art or history or mythology and all of these things are things that I am personally interested in as a writer because I want to get not necessarily I don't need to become a PhD in each topic right I just want a well fleshed out but but surface level introduction to something so I can speak intelligently about it so I can have that background when I go to write a story that is set maybe in a historical time period or based on some mythology or something like that. And Wondrium has so much content that is relevant for writers, not necessarily writing instruction, although it does have that too. In fact, one of them is called How to Write Best-Selling Fiction by James Scott Bell, and it is one of the best courses I've ever taken on best-selling fiction. It is absolutely phenomenal. But even if you're not learning about specific writing aspects, there's, as writers, we have to learn about a million different things and research a million different things to write books well. And so all of those other things, if you want a good resource that lets you get the pretty thorough understanding of a topic without becoming a PhD on the subject, then I would check out Wondrium. Again, links to this and all of the things below. All right, next tool that I really want to highlight is Publisher Rocket. 
And this is a tool, uh, a marketing tool essentially for identifying your keywords and your categories to use on Amazon. This is something that a lot of people also use for idea generation. So I'll go ahead and pull up Rocket here. This is what Rocket looks like when you first log in. And if we were to say, hey, I wanna write a book about, let's just say, King Arthur, we could input that and it will give us a whole bunch of key keywords. These are keywords that people are actually searching for on Amazon. And then you can see, are any of these keywords good ones that I might want to write? And, and you can use this before or after you have written a book. You can use this as research to see what do you want to write a book about, but you could also say, I need to fill out my keywords for Amazon as I'm uploading the information there. What are some keywords that are most likely to be searched by users? And so in this case, we could go and analyze any of these keywords. So if you look at King Arthur, you say, analyze this up here and it gives you the estimated searches per month and the competitive score. As you might expect, the word King Arthur is way too broad and way too busy, so uh, it's showing up in red here. But if I go and I analyze these keywords here, King Arthur Books for Adults, King Arthur Kids Book, King Arthur Books for Kids, these are a little bit better. We got some yellow here, so they're a little competitive, but they have a good green for number of searches, this one is green for uh, the competitiveness, but maybe not as many searches. But still, if you could rank high for King Arthur books for adults, then this might actually, you know, to, if, if you're number one and 288 people are searching for that keyword, you know, that there's a good chance that those people will pick up your book. And so this is a really good tool for research purposes and for marketing. Rocket also allows you to analyze a given book. So say you have a competitor or a book that is similar to the one you want to write, you can put that into Rocket and it will tell you a lot of information about it, including the keywords and categories that you might want to use if you're targeting that book. There's just all kinds of things that you can do. Kevin J. Anderson uses it, as you can see here, Joanna Penn. So definitely one you should check out. And again, I have a link to that below. Last but not least is I'm a cheating a little bit with this one because this one is a little bit AI related. In fact, it's a lot AI related, but I just had to mention it because we don't really think of it as an AI tool. And that is Pro Writing Aid. Pro Writing Aid is what I use for all of my proofreading when I'm doing my own personal proofreading pass. This is what I use because it's really good for long form fiction and it it can learn things like what words you overuse and things like that. It does have some AI features. In fact, the way it understands how grammar works is through machine learning, essentially. Uh, but it also has some generative AI uses like the rephrase option here, which lets you select a passage and then it'll rephrase it for you. That's an AI tool, but really, you know, people don't usually think of this sort of tool as an AI tool. It's not something you're going to be writing with AI, but it is capable of doing quite a lot of interesting things. And mostly it just has a lot of different reports that it gives you and you can have all kinds of things in there. You could have passive voice. If you really want to work on your passive voice, it'll have a whole bunch of things like that and it'll tell you ways to fix it. You could have adverbs, you could have run on sentences, basically anything you can think of that's grammar or sentence structure related, they've got a report for it so they can go through your writing or your article or whatever it is you're doing and really fix it up and give you lots of tips for improving it. So that's Pro Writing Aid. Again, kind of a cheat because it is a little bit of an AI product, but I thought it worth including anyway. Those are my six different tools or services that I personally use very frequently in my writing process. I hope that was useful for you and I'll see you in the next video.